Welcome to another podcast for the Inuit Cultural Online Resource. Today we'll be exploring the Inukshuk and its close relatives. Basically, the Inukshuk is a pile of stones that acts in place of a person. The Inukshuk over the last few decades has grown in familiarity and popularity among Canadians. Inukshuk can now be seen around the world. It can be seen in towns and cities across Canada, although most people don't realize its significance and purpose. Recent events have made it more popular than ever. To Inuit, however, it is much more than a decoration. In modern day, it's taken on an iconic representation of Inuit culture and pride. Traditionally, its use is far more significant. Inukshuit, the plural form for Inukshuk, were built from surrounding stones from whatever was on hand, so no two Inukshuit were ever the same, and each serving a very specific purpose. As you watch and listen, you will learn that the Inukshuk and its close relatives were a necessary tool for survival. Uh, this is called the Inukshuk, and that will be built on the top of the hills uh, from the stone wall where the women and children are hiding behind on a caribou trail. Now at the other end is a lake, and on the lake is a hunter with a hayek waiting for the caribou to come by. So when the caribou gets aligned with those Inukshuk, the women and children come out screaming and spook the caribou. So the caribou starts running. And thinking these are all human beings with arms stretched out, it keeps running past them uh, along the side. It doesn't go uh, past them. It goes right down to the lake and it starts swimming. And when it's far enough from the shoreline, the, the hunter with the hayak paddles and grabs on the antler and takes his knife and uh, puts it behind the head for a fast kill because you're not supposed to let them suffer at all. So after that he puts them on the shore where some other men and women are uh, skinning the caribou and all they take is uh, the hide, the sinew and the fat. The fat for the oil lamp and the sinew for thread for making clothing. Now what they do with the meat is they uh, dig down to the permafrost and then uh, flavor with some uh, heather and whatnot. And then they make what's called a igunaksi, meaning a, a place where there's meat. All it is, it's a, a structure like this. It's like a pyramid. A pyramid that will look like so. And, and it's all piled up, completely piled up. And below it is cash meat that is used in the wintertime, uh, the meat of the caribou that they caught. So if you take any meat, from the cache, you're supposed to remove some stones from the top. That tells the other group that there's um, uh, still meat there, but only this much. If all the stones are gone like so, that means the meat is completely gone. Uh, do they, when they remove the stones, they leave some that, like to the side so that people know that it? Yeah, yeah. That, that some they, has been taken. Otherwise, you wouldn't know how many were there in the first it, place, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It starts out as a pyramid. Okay. Yeah, and every time somebody takes some meat out of there, they take a little bit off the top okay. until it's all gone. Well, thanks for watching, and we hope you've learned something about the Inukshuk and its place of importance in Inuit culture. Now, stay tuned for part two of our podcast, where you'll be able to learn how to build your own Inukshuk. You'll want to start by finding some stones that have flat edges, as you'll be needing to stack the stones. In terms of the number of stones, between 6 to 10 stones is somewhere probably ideal. Since you'll be building this to look like a person, you'll also need to make sure that some of the stones you find, perhaps two of them, will be wider than the others for the arms. You want to start out by finding some good, solid base flat stones for the feet and legs. Find that you need to rotate the stones around to make sure that they balance and they'll stay in place. When building a larger Inukshuk, the stones don't always place well together, so smaller stones are inserted in between to brace them and to hold them in place. In our example, we've used a larger stone to represent the torso area. Stones you've chosen, you may be able to skip that step. Proceed with using your wide stone to place the arms across. In this case, I was able to find a perfect wide flat stone for the arms. But don't worry if you don't have the perfect stones. Every Inukshuk is different and it just depends on the stones you have on hand. Now proceed with adding your headstone. Well, that's it. You're done. Hope you enjoyed making your Inukshuk. If you want to keep your Inukshuk 
together and you are using stones that didn't balance well, you can always use a glue gun, as in this example. But make sure you have help from a teacher or another adult. Once again, thanks for watching.